Study Section 3. Issues and Themes in African Traditional Political Thoughts. Introduction. This lecture concludes our discussion of the nature of African traditional political thoughts, which we began in the previous lecture. Here, I will outline the issues and themes that have emerged from African traditional political thoughts. Objectives. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to 1. Describe issues and themes in African traditional political thoughts. And 2. Identify these themes and issues. Contents. Issues and themes in African traditional political thoughts. In this lecture, I will outline some of the recurring issues and themes in African traditional political thoughts. These issues and themes include A. Origin and nature of the state. B. Legitimacy, authority, and the limits of power. C. Political obligations, duties, and rights. D. The nature of law and the political economy. Let us look at each of these issues and themes in more details. A. Origin and nature of the state. Most traditional perspectives on the origin and nature of the state in Africa tend to clothe this in some supernatural and religious horror. Pre-colonial tales of the origin of African political communities trace this either to a particular god, heaven, or a mythical and powerful ancestor. In fact, it is difficult to think of an African community whose tale of origin is principally secular without having a religious or mythical tone to it. In other words, most traditional African societies trace their origins either to a supernatural ancestor or a particular god. Apart from conceiving of the origin of the pre-colonial African state in religious and mythical terms, African traditional political thought also describe this state as an organic one. As Busia has argued, such a perception of man in political community in general lays more emphasis on his membership in the group than on his individuality. The membership in the group continues beyond death into the life beyond. This perspective tended to see the survivor of the individual as being dependent on the survivor of the state, emphasizing the need for a strong feeling of community. B. Legitimacy, authority, and the limit of power. As I indicated earlier, the origin of the state in Africa tended to be traced to a divine or supernatural source. It is not surprising, therefore, that the use of power also tended to be legitimated by divine and supernatural forces and artifacts. The right to govern was often delineated in political thought and tradition as deriving from a shared myth of descent. Political authority was therefore rooted in the local variant of a god figure, which was perceived as the ultimate source of the right to govern and the rationale for obedience, given the all-pervading roles of religion in the theory and practice of politics in the African past. It was not surprising that most pre-colonial African political systems were theocratic and subsequently absolute and totalitarian in their demand for loyalty and unquestioning faith from the road. However, the same theocratic tendencies in African thought and practice that encourage absolutism also provided some of the more important limits to the use of power. Apart from having their powers circumscribed by custom, 
religious practices and cults, wielders of power, be they in monarchical or republican setups, were further checked by other layers of government, including councils of chiefs and age grade associations. Citing an example of succession rights among the Jukuns, for instance, Okuli notes that when a new king has been installed, he is told of his power, how he is to use it to benefit the people, and the threat of popular rebellion against his regime and assassination if he deviates from these duties. The people's warning goes thus Today, we have given you the house of your fathers. The whole world is yours. You are a guinea corn and beans. Henceforth, you have no father and mother at all. Follow in the footsteps of your forefathers and do evil to no one, that your people may abide with you and that you may come to the end of your reign in health. Emphasis, therefore, is put on a use of power. Contracts in which abuse of power will lead to the people invoking ancestral spirits to revoke the right of the wielders of power to govern. Also, in most Yoruba societies, for instance, kings were limited by the customs and usages of their kingdoms, as well as structure of the government within which they had to operate. Abuse of power will lead to the people invoking the gods or ancestors to fight on their behalf. Political obligations, duties, and rights. As I indicated earlier, the conception of the state in African traditional political thought is an organic one, which places more emphasis on the community than in places on the individual. This implies in practice that the individual's duties and obligations to the community tended to be emphasized more than the rights owned in by the community. Moreover, both duties and rights were defined in communal rather than personal terms. The political obligations to obey and the rights of the ruler to issue commands both emanated from the demands of customs, dictates of a common ancestry, and the health of the society which itself was a system of interlocking families, age grades, guild, arid, secret societies. The sanction of religion and shared values contributed to this communal definition of obligations, duties, and rights. The debt an individual owned to the society in the form of obligations and duties were defined not by himself, but by his station in the community. The age grade he belonged to, the stature of his family and so forth. It was this same consideration that defined the benefit he expected in turn from the community in the form of rights. D. Nature of the legal system. The legal system in traditional African political system was perceived principally as an instrument for enhancing the moral and mythical fabric that binded social and political life together. Thus, crimes against society tended to receive more serious punishments than crime against the individual, except in murder cases which were often seen as a crime against society. Thus, the legal system helped to reinforce communal solidarity. The ultimate goal was not to apportion blame, but to re-establish unity and remove dislocative or destructive forces from the community. E. Political economy. The last theme in traditional African political thought that is highlighted here relates to perspectives on the politics of economic life. In this regard, Perspectives on the most important means of production, namely land, stress the mythical and common nature of traditional African political economy. In the words of Sego, Negro African animism makes the earth the principal means 
of production among peasant peoples into a person, a spirit, the ancestor of the clan, the first to clear and occupy the ground, has made a path with this spirit sanctioned by ritual sacrifice. As Inyerere put it, to us in Africa, land was always recognized as belonging to the community. Each individual had a right to the use of land because otherwise he could not earn his living and one cannot have the right to life without also having the right to some means of maintaining life. But the African's right to land was simply the right to use it. He had no other right to it, nor did it occur to him to try and claim one. In Sega's conclusion, the political economy was based on a socialist and communal spirit. As he argues, Negro-African society is collectivist, or more exactly, communal because it is rather a communion of souls than an aggregate of individuals. We had already achieved socialism before the coming of the European. Thus, production and distribution revolved around the lineage and the extended family in the community. In this lecture, attempts has been made to outline the nature of African traditional political thought, as well as issues, themes, and elements that have been enlightened in the process of thinking about politics in the African past. In the next lecture, and part two of this course, an outline of impact of external influences resulting from Islamic penetration and colonialism on the heritage of the African past in the area of political thought is made. Summary Religion, the supernatural and the community form the core of ideas on the state, authority, power, duties, rights, the law and political economy in political thought that is indigenous to Africa. End of study section 3. Thanks for listening.